I'm Bavo and I directed and uh, co-written co yes. the movie. And Eve is here as a, he's the writer producer of the movie and, and does a lot more than that. Uncredited. So uh, he might now and then also say a word. Uh, um, well measured. And, and there's a third screen, screenwriter just to be yes. like. His name is Jack Boone. Yes, he's, uh, and he's the best of the three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but he's the, he doesn't like shopping. But he, you two uh, co-wrote your first feature too. Uh, yes. Texas yes. as well. Yes, correct. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, well, actually, I remember uh, hearing about Souvenir at TIFF last year, because that's oh, really? when the news, that's where I was when the news dropped uh, oh, of the new project. So here we are a year later, yeah, uh, yeah. premiering in special presentations. Yeah. Um, why don't we start with uh, the origins of it? Well, I just, to be honest, because um, there's also always one lie in, in every interview. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> at least, just at one. least one lie in, <laughs> one, least in one every lie. interview. Um, um, I try to be. Um, uh, 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 no, I wanted to make a souvenir as my first feature film. Oh. And uh, it took uh, a, 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 a while, a long while, to get it get it really financed. Uh, and um, so it took so long that um, we kind of gave up uh, the project to, to make another movie that, that was Nazi Texas. And um, after Nazi Texas, we thought like, well, what now? We should do souvenir, and um, went on with it. Gave it a, a rewrite. Um, took it to Berlin. Took it to Berlin. Won a pitching pitching award in Berlin with it, and then we thought like we should really go on with this, and we should really. Our dream was to um, to do the movie. With with Isabelle Le Père. Yeah, we had with, with, uh, with, uh, with her in mind. Yeah, okay. with okay. her in mind. Where we thought like, oh, who can who can pull that off? You know, a first movie in, in, with Isabelle Le Père. She's one of the greatest uh, actresses in, in Europe, if not in the world. So she will not want to <laughs> read my script. I thought, and um, so after after Nazi Texas. Uh, we did contact her, and uh, uh, she she read the script. She loved my first feature, in Nazi Texas. She really loved it. And it was uh, already really weird to experience that she actually had considered the script and right, right. seen Nazi Texas in the, the shorts. I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, uh, I, I'm very proud of my first first film, but it's it's a very poetic little film that hasn't been seen everywhere in the world, you know? So I was very honored that Isabel had taken the time to watch it and and, and she she was very precise about what she liked about it, the way I worked with actors, the way the way I uh, um, especially the way uh, the love story between the, the, the two young heroes in the movie uh, is is portrayed is something she really liked because it, it's 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 uh, not prudish, no, and it's not. Um, it doesn't look dirty. It's really it's somewhere in between. Yeah, yeah, and, it's not and, tawdry, you know, yeah. And it's and it's very sensual without being like porn or without being like. So it's like she liked that balance. Like yeah, how, how we went with with the body and the love and the love relationship and and, and how I uh, had been able to to do that with. 14, 16, 18 year olds who who are very young and have little experience in, in, in life and in acting. So um, she wanted to to work with me and then we made a movie. <laughs> I can um, see her being attracted to it though. Uh, it, it was a nice light film to see her in because usually she's playing a very strange mother to somebody his age, uh, yeah. Kevin, yeah. his last name is uh, Azaiz. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Like, I, I could see her uh, in some form playing his mother in some strange sexual yes, scenario yes, in other yes, films, yes, you know? Yes, so yes, yeah. it, it was it was very nice, um, uh, a nice flirtation and chemistry between them. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. You know. And I think Isabel... I love them together, yeah, really. Yeah. I think I really think it works. Yeah, they do work well together. Yeah. It's it, it's, it's, it's true that, that Isabel in, in international cinema is uh, now, uh, in, in the last decades, really known for her uh, very special uh, movies and very special characters and a bit bit like strong choices. Strong yeah. choices for like out of the world characters. Um, but she has two sides and, 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 and she's been in, in, in big commercial movies uh, in, in the 1980s in France. She was, she was in, in, in the biggest of biggest commercial movies. And still in France, uh, she's also in lighter, lighter stuff that doesn't travel so far. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and she likes to do that. She likes yeah. to do both. And and her her quote on that is, is I like to quote her quote uh, uh, is that tragedy and comedy is is just very close. It's it's like it's like brother and sister. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's, it's like twin Siamese twin. You can't have tragedy without comedy. Right. And, and so I think that that's her that's her way of seeing that and, and of, of, of seeing that as a, as a unity as a balance. And um, that's just why I, I think she's so good in, in in my movie because it's a movie about actually about something very sad about someone whose life is totally. Like a mess whose life is really all the dreams are like shattered and there's no way of like mending it, it's like over. And yeah. uh, that you, you could make a really sad movie about that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she, it, she feels very stagnant at first. Yeah, um, yeah. I was gonna, why uh, the pate factory, which I found very uh, kind of like dark humor in there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I was thinking like, what, what would be really the worst. <laughs> Imagine, I was thinking of of, 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 uh, of the ladies of Ava, Agneta and Annie Fried, uh, uh, and, and you know, well, they have, they, they also have things in their biographies that are, that are particular, uh, but I, I, I thought like, Imagine these ladies, they got totally forgotten what could be the worst for them to be in. And I thought this meat factory is very, very photogenic. It's, it's really beautiful in, in, in images. And it's really also a, a, a big visual contrast uh, to, to, the, to the world of like show business, which is like all glitter and glamour. And, and, and I needed something really cold, something really monotonous blue uh, uh, so I thought that would be good uh, and and also I think it's another reason is that uh, the character of, of Lilian she for her it's all or nothing she doesn't want to be somewhere in, in in the middle she doesn't want mediocrity she she'd rather disappear than you know she could also she could work in like a, a a, a little tiny chocolate shop, or or, or, or she would sell uh, sell Chanel clothes or something, and you know, still feel like like a miniature diva, diva. You know, she could feel like, oh, I'm I'm the queen of my Chanel, Chanel shop <laughs> boutique, but she doesn't want that. She doesn't want to be like, oh, I'm half on the top, you know, I'm halfway there, no, no, yeah. when I'm not halfway there, I disappear, I put on this silly mask, no one recognizes me here, and I do this silly job, and I don't think, it's like, it's like, uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I stop thinking, I stop being. I think also there's a balance between where we, uh, we actually where she starts and then uh, the, the show aspect. Um, there are parallels between the two because also um, for the pate factory you also dress up. Like yeah. You actually dress, you know, you hide yourself. Whereas for show business you show yourself. And there's also this whole choreography of stuff you have to do. Which yes. in the show she also has this whole thing to perform. So I think there is a parallel between those two. Yeah, but she does that like this. She's like, oh. 
Oh, she does a very like. Very precise. And, and her colleagues are all like. <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah, she yeah. takes pride. It's yeah, in she's her. Like, she's very yeah, meticulous. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when she, when uh, she starts getting attention again as a singer, she does seem to jump right back into uh, old patterns. Yes. Um, yes, which I felt related to the title. Like she's still she's still stuck in a certain way of thinking too. Yes. Um, which yeah. is why she treats uh, Azaisa's character this kind of harshly. I think. Yeah. Because. Very demolish. Yeah, because she's supposed to. Uh, to me, it read like she was paralleling with her ex. Uh, like this was another manager, another love interest, yeah, but, but yeah, he's just yeah. gonna go away eventually. So yeah, I think she was also very. Dis My personal idea is that that she was also very disappointed. Like, oh no, it's there again. Yeah, no, I don't want this. I, I knew I, it was a bad idea to to do this comeback. I think I think that's that's. That's something we all can have. Like we were like, oh, what's the, you, you do something and then you're, you're you're like, okay, you're already on the road and they're like, oh, is <laughs> it it's I should I should I drive that way? <laughs> well, I'm on the road now, too late now, yeah. kind of things. So she she has this first stress in the beginning. It's the, the very first time she sings, she's really like. Wow! Oh, it's nice to be singing. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of it's, it's like a, she finds her innocence back, back, and then then when her comeback uh, uh, is, is evolving, she also finds the disappointment back. Yeah, yeah disappointment. And, and, and and the and the fear of 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 of, uh, of not doing it well, and and the fear of, of making bad choices. Or, you know. Because also when you say treating uh, Kevin. Kevin's character badly. Um, I think Lillian, at a certain moment, she goes into, like you said, into all her old patterns. But I don't know if she, as a character, has the intention to really hurt him. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I don't know. No. I, yeah. I, I, it seemed like a, a defense mechanism. Yeah. So it could, it's, could yeah. Be, it's actually happening, but I don't know what, why it is. It, it's something. I think it's probably. It's, uh, linked to her past and how it used to go, and it probably has to do with that. I just the uh, someone I watched it with, I had discussions about. He's like, oh, she turns on him so quickly, and I'm like, yeah, but it, to me that made sense that she would respond that way um, when he accuses her of kind of ignoring him. And yeah, um, she's super stressed. Oh yeah, yeah, oh. She's, and also in certain oh. things. Uh, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, because we've just seen her like in all these places where it half worked. You know, like on the uh, how do you say, fancy fair. You know, the song ends. People just continue talking. Nobody yeah. even goes like. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like I am very mean when I'm super stressed. But yeah. <laughs> you know, I think I think yeah, maybe yeah. Did, did you t you both wrote the songs together yeah. for yes. her? The songs, okay. yeah. And uh, it's your first time writing the lyrics. Songs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Very nice. So the, the, yeah, the, thank you. Thank you. It's. Uh, it's the the, the, the the music is is done by Tom Lauderdale uh, from Pink Martini, uh, and the way we did that is that uh, Eve and I wrote uh, uh, lyrics first. In in most cases, we wrote lyrics first, um, based on the emotions and the characters of the film, uh, and then then Thomas we flew Thomas in to our. Uh, little hometown of Ostende in Belgium. Thomas came and uh, all in Oregon. For to Thomas from Ostende, Ostende. Ostende. <laughs> Ostende. He, he, he had just one request, he wanted a piano because he doesn't want to like compose on computers or on paper now. He needs a piano. So so we gave him these lyrics and, uh, and we made the songs. And we made songs in, in some days and, and then we finished the songs in um, in Nota L'Amour in Paris. We finished those songs but again uh, oh, in Théâtre du, du Châtelet, actually. And then there was a show the at Folie, Folie Bergère where... So we had just made these songs and then we're assisting to a big martini concert in Paris. And then all out of the blue, 
he starts playing one of the songs in the middle of the show. Yeah. And he says, like, so I'd like to welcome to the stage Bravo the Fun and Geek the Drag and we've written this song. Yeah, it's full of surprises. It's really full of surprises. Nice. <laughs> really full of surprises. <laughs> yeah. See, it's a word. I, like, I never imagined myself being yeah. on the stage of Fun Yeah. <laughs> it's, almost it's, 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 it's a great, great, crazy friend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can say that. Yeah. I, 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 it's, it's, it's a I, good crazy. I hope he, <laughs> he takes that as a compliment. But uh, uh, yeah, no, he he, he 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 composes with his band and with the audience, so uh, that, that's very important. Um, pretty pretty boys, the second song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, really good song. Yeah, 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 third song, uh, which is very catchy. Uh, she, her performing reminded me a bit of. I kept thinking of Marlena Dietrich. Yeah, actually, yeah, while, yeah, watching yeah. Her yeah. her and yeah. her yeah. hand movements and. Yeah, there's, there's some rigidity there, but it's, it's kind of amusing. Yeah. Um, uh, costume design, like the there's three also very distinct looks for her. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm yeah. assuming that was on purpose. Yeah, it was on, yeah, it was yeah, purpose. yeah. Well, because um, they kind of evolved. It's yeah, like, absolutely. We want to be um, so the final dress, but we're not going to talk too much about. It. Okay. So, um, the final dress uh, had to be like this really powerful recognizable uh, dress that comes back from the you know from her crazy past yeah it comes uh, back with it her it's a magic dress and it's a bit like a magic dress and uh, the first dress the, the red dress we wanted her to um, personally that's my favorite because I think she wears it so well I, I think the all the all the photo art around yeah, it, it looks yeah. amazing. Yeah. The there's, a, there's a beautiful. Post you know the world isn't Instagram. fair. You know, look at Isabelle Fair, and you know the world isn't fair. <laughs> it's like all uh, such an intelligent, talented woman, and so beautiful. It's uh, well, fairness is not that. <laughs> well, anyway, but uh, with that dress, uh, we wanted to put it there because we um, we felt that we wanted to convey it. The, her, how she lives that moment and how singing, performing there, because you will notice that the performance is still a bit, you know, like, uh, it's not super fluent. You kind of like, you know, you kind of feel that it's been a while that she's been on the stage and she's not very comfortable. But we wanted to, um, to convey to the audience how the, the spark starts again. Yeah, the excitement come, comes back. Yeah, we've, we've only seen her in like, yeah, brownish tones the whole film through. And then suddenly there's that red. Yeah, like, like, like a flame. Plain like red. A flame. So, so it's like, oh, I'm going to sing again. Wow. Like a yeah, like Rebirth, yeah. the Phoenix, like all yeah, kinds yeah, of yeah. Yeah. worked perfectly. Um, and I also like that it's, uh, the, the souvenir feels much different than North Sea Texas thematically, uh, look, tone, yeah. uh, which I thought I find it interesting that that was meant to be your first feature. Yeah. Um, because uh, I was reading an, another interview with you from North Sea Texas, and they were comparing your shorts to your first feature uh, and kind of how nature plays a big role yeah. in that. And, yeah. Um, uh, at least with North Sea Texas, like uh, first gay love, yeah. and and this is you know uh, lots of interiors, uh, yes. heterosexual romance, yeah. um, May December romance at that. So yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah. it's it feels a lot different. I like that. Okay, I didn't know you. I didn't know what yeah. to expect. So it was good. yeah, yeah. But yeah. We're, I, I'm extremely happy with it. I feel that um, even I, well. What I hope is that people can relate to the love story because any, you know, any love story, a lot of love stories have this thing where it might work, it might not, and, or there's a difference, or you're different, different ethnicities or ages, or the same sex, you know. So there's all other religions. So there's so many things that could be uh, a problem in a relationship yeah. that I think that a lot of people will be able to relate to the story yeah. and hopefully also experience that, that it just doesn't matter it's just yeah. it's it just, better yep. 
Yeah. Yeah. Isabel calls this movie a, a, a fable. You say fable in English? Yes. Fable. Yeah. Yeah. A fable, and I think that's very right in the sense that that we don't really ask ourselves like we we, we don't start to count the age difference. For them, they're really in love. That that that's what counts, and 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 that's how the actors really play that. And that's that's also what makes this movie. What I like personally about telling a movie like that 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 you you in this world, in this fantasy world, and you can really have your emotions flow with, with the characters. And um, because it's, it's, it's in, this, in this beautiful package of, of like colors and, and dresses and, and, and beautiful lighting, and, and then, uh, you, you, you see really the emotions uh, rather than and the reality that blurs the emotions. Right. That's what we try to do. Yeah, it, it never, it, it makes sense that she would be attracted to him and he to her, the, yeah. the way that it's set up and yeah. the background. It's it, it, it really works. It's like, it's, I really crazy. like uh, in the first scene when um, when he's late for, uh, at work, when he's a bit late, and he looks at her, he has a certain way of looking yeah. which like, makes you completely fall in love with him. Because he has like this, Flair, yeah, and you kind of learn, like, yeah, you have to like this guy. You know? Yeah, you I think, like yeah, him. love is something very irrational to me. I think you don't think like, okay, today I'm gonna fall in love with a person, and it should be no, 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 okay, and then well, some people you find out, that. some people like you know? that's the problem, I think. Like. <laughs> so it's more like, oh, oh, this is love. Yeah, I like it, kind of thing. So, so that's what the movie is about, and that's also what North Sea Texas is about. So, in, in that sense, that I mean, there's a lot of differences, but but that that's I think the core of, of the love story and of the emotional roller coaster ride is like discovering your love and discovering your love and living it, like freeing yourself from limitations or. Or like or doubt, or, uh, and 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 go for that love and and, and live it and 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 I I, I like that. No, it works well. I, I was very happy.